Is this all? Is this all? Okay, okay. All right. Hopefully, I'm close. Hey, hopefully, I'm close. Oh, hopefully, I'm close. Hey, Colonel Sigala here. As you guys can see, I'm very excited. Because right now, in my hand, I have the Galaxy Z42. This, I mean, this is just me and pure sexiness. Thank you very much, Samsung, for giving me my best wishes. How much? Let me just show you. Look at it. Look at it, look at it again, look at it, sexy, sexy indeed. Anyway, let's talk about this device because I'm here to take over this gaming video, eh? Hey, wait, wait, stop, wait, now let me finish. <laughs> okay, okay, I know the colonel is excited about the Z Fold 2, uh, but trust me, he will get his own video on this because he's fully excited, as I am. And welcome to my gaming video on this device. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this device as well. The Z Fold 2 is a successor to the original Galaxy Fold. And if you look at how Samsung has taken things uh, in terms of foldables with the original Fold, the Z Flip, as well as also the Z Fold 2 that we have here, it is just quite interesting that an expansive range of foldable devices. Now, this device, the Z Fold 2, or the Fold 2, I'm gonna call it, because that Z naming is just, sorry Samsung, you should have done that. Um, the, the Fold 2 as a device is really awesome. First off, you look at it compared to the original Fold. Uh, the cover display is just much larger. It's around the same footprint, but it is 6.3 inches, so much more usable, especially if you're scrolling or doing things, or even if you're gaming with the front display. Now, uh, of course, that display is a 60 hertz display, and you're thinking, okay, all right, I want more, and yes, it gives more. So we open up to reveal, of course, the main display. And that's 7.6 inches. It's uh, 2208 by 17.03, I believe. And it is a 120 hertz display. And this is where, of course, the adaptive uh, refresh rate works. Doesn't work on the rear display, on the cover display, because the cover display is 60 hertz. But you have that ability built in into that. So 120 hertz. And we'll check that out in our gaming. But it's powered by the Snapdragon 865 Plus processor worldwide. So don't worry about that. And you also have, of course, a sizable battery in there, 4,500 milliamp battery. Uh, and we'll see how that works over time. 25 watt charging, some really loud speakers, and boy, t trust me, when you hear the speakers, you understand how loud. And I think I'll do a separate speaker video. Check out like the whole Galaxy line, how their, their speakers actually sound. But anyway, um, uh, so there's that. Now you also have cameras. You've got 12 megapixel cameras in the rear. Uh, the front facing camera on the cover display is 10 megapixels and the front facing camera on the uh, internal display is 10 as well. There's also a screen protector. I'm gonna remind you guys, there's a screen protector on the display which um, can be taken off, but you shouldn't. If you want to, you can contact Samsung and they can get you a replacement or fix that, give you a, you know, give you a screen protector. But I'm just letting you guys know there is one, so if you see something, that it's a screen protector. Now, let's talk about gaming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out some Android games and we'll play some Game Pass as well, because of course, you know, that's something that I've been doing a lot lately. We'll see how it plays, we'll look at benchmarks from Game uh, Game Bench Pro, which is providing us benchmarks for this video, and then we'll go ahead and we'll, you know, round this bad boy up. So, let's do some gaming. Cover me, reloading. Down. Hostile. Enemy contact.
All right, so gaming on this device is really smooth. Now, there are different ways to game, and it looks different whether you're using the cover display or the internal display on the device. When it comes to benchmarks, which you, I'm sure you guys are waiting for, uh, looking at the benchmarks of Call of Duty, which we put on our max settings, uh, it's median FPS was 60 FPS, it's FPS stability is 100%, so it stayed at that 60 throughout most of its gameplay. CPU usage was about 8.31%, while GPU is higher at 32%. It used about a gig of memory, so that's how much I was using to play the game. Now, when we move over to PUBG, PUBG also had a median FPS of 60. Um, its stability was also at 100%. CPU and GPU were much higher, or at least a little higher than Call of Duty, which we would expect with PUBG, at 15.16% for CPU, 44.6% for GPU. Memory usage was less at 874, uh, and peak memory was about 875. So uh, it uses less memory, but more of the CPU and GPU. Now, Vainglory, which runs at 120 frames per second, so see how it is, especially all this is stats from the uh, internal display. Vainglory ran at a medium FPS of 120 frames per second, so we got to match, of course, what our displays put on in terms of refresh rates. 99% FPS stability, CPU usage was about 7.3, so it's actually lower, and GPU is a bit higher at 46.15%. In terms of memory, you're looking at 904. Uh, for average memory, peak was about 925, so lightly, slightly less than uh, a gigabyte. So, uh, that's the kind of performance you're getting, which matches your a lot of gaming phones, matches the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Again, it's the 865 Plus, so you get to see that here. Now, Game Pass, I wanted to just see what kind of performance you're getting because you know what? You want to play console games on your smartphone, at least at the console level. So, a median FPS was 57. Uh, frames per second, which is actually not bad, so it's close to 60. Stability is about 94%. Again, this is Game Pass beta, so this is not the final product, so this most likely will change. CPU usage was 3.4%. Again, this is streaming off the cloud, so you shouldn't use that much. And GPU was not available because it wasn't using the GPU, so you have that there. In terms of memory, you're looking at about 600 megabytes uh, for average memory and 604 for peak. So that is what it, it gives you there. In terms of performance, though, I think overall, you're gonna get the, one of the best performances on this device. Now, the other thing to note also is, of course, temperature. This actually ran rather warm. I mean, yeah, it hit 101 degrees uh, for me, about 37 to 38 uh, degrees uh, in terms of uh, looking at it in, in Celsius. And uh, yeah, I don't think it has any specific special type of cooling, which is probably why, and you're running that brand new A65 Plus processor. The speakers on the other hand were booming loud, really loud, and I've, I've told you guys, I'm gonna do a separate speaker test. Uh, it really came out clear and crisp. I, li I really like it because you've got two basically bottom firing speakers on this device, so you're getting some really, really clean sound. I like that with this device. Best thing to have the speakers on the top side if you're using the tablet mode, just much easier. I'd suggest people to, to rotate it. Um, I think overall though, performance on this device is really good. A lot of people will like it, and I think in terms of gaming, this is going to be a great experience. But stay tuned for more videos on the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Uh, we're gonna show you just more functionality, uh, uh, just using some of the uh, multitask features, how it applies. Um, and there's one thing I want to, to mention though, when you're gaming and you are gaming with external display, not every game supports quick switching. So Call of Duty Mobile, you play a game with external display, you jump into the internal display, it still stays in the resolution of the external display. PUBG on the other hand, differently, it jumps and it resizes. So Game developers have to, of course, adapt to these features for this device. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you like, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much, and always enjoy your entertainment.